Good morning folks, it's uh, March 12th today around 11.30, first time fishing in 2014, here at the small pond of the fishing club, fishing here for the first time, don't know this pond, uh, checked it out a bit, it's not that deep, maybe 3-4 feet, um, no nibble so far but it's just pleasant to sit in the sun you see, we've got very warm weather for a few days now you see i'm sitting in t-shirt in march hardly uh, believable anyway so uh probably we could still have a nibble later in the day as it's supposed to get a few degrees warmer as well so we shall see at least it's nice to sit in the sun here all right Fishing a feeder rod on the left side here, small float rod and another two float rods. See one float is over there near the bank and the uh, feeder basket we've dropped right in front of that bush in the water. And two floats are here in open water. But no nibble so far. Maybe it's still too cold. We shall see. Okay. Okay, after two and a half hours on the first pond, we have moved to another pond just a mile down the road. Uh, not sure whether there are any fish stocked in that first one. Here I'm sure there are fish stocked. So we're gonna sit here for another two hours and try whether we would get a nibble or not and then go home as I said before nice to sit in the Sun tomorrow afternoon they said the weather is gonna turn to storm and gray skies and that's it so we're taking a chance today all right the Canadian geese have already arrived eaten on the greens now Soon they will spread apart to uh, nest and raise their goslings to fly back to North America by late fall again. This pond here is also quite shallow, just three to four feet, but uh, no nibble again so far, not even of roach or bream. Not to talk of carp and tench, what we were after, but uh, we shall see. Um, one thing is, you see I'm using this Y-shaped rod rest. I always like to put the real seed behind the Y, because uh, in one unattended moment, if a carp bites, it will pull your rod into the water. So this way you have some seconds uh, left to react before this the rod will start to shake and get pulled into the water uh, I learned this the hard way so now I'm always doing it like this just a bit of uh, security for the rod okay stalks also have already arrived don't know if you could see it on video there's one sitting on the nest there in center of the picture started to nest as well got quite a few stalks around here they also come flying back from northern africa and spain to spend the summer here and in fall or autumn they're gonna fly back south all right just a few words about my uh, setup for float fishing here's the stop knot on an 8 pound test line uh, the main ballast an inline sinker bead rubber bead for shock absorption to protect the knot swivel the uh, 6 pound test leader the uh, smaller sinker this uh, and the hook and the bait um, I'm using a uh, homemade floats of reed for still water. Hardly cost anything. Uh, the this small ballast 
would pull the float uh, a bit more down than it's supposed to. So uh, this way you will set this uh, stop knot in a way that this uh, small sinker here would lay on the bottom which is indicated if the uh, antenna portion of your float, the red portion here, sticks uh, a bit further out of the water then you are sure that this uh, lead would lay on the bottom. I've been fishing this rig for many years and uh, it works pretty well. Okay, um, we are leaving now, did not have any nibble. It's rather useless, not even bream or roach would take the bait. So we are going, all right. Okay, we are giving up for today. T tried two ponds without any nibble at all. Not even the smallest roach to take our bait. Uh, trying again next week, even though the weather is forecast to get worse, but uh, we're gonna try for stocker trout next week. Okay, see ya, goodbye.